Good afternoon on this Saturday, the 1st of August, 2020, as we are in day three of tracking Hurricane Isaias. Remember to make all decisions solely based on official National Hurricane Center forecast products or forecast messages from your local jurisdiction, emergency management, or from local National Weather Service offices in your state or area. We are on day three of tracking Hurricane Isaias, and today the storm is looking very disheveled and very unorganized. Certainly great news for those interests in the eastern and southeast coast of Florida, where Isaias is anticipated to make its next stop as a minimal hurricane. But as you can see on the satellite presentation here, a lot is going on. We have a sort of a decoupling of the storm. The swirl of Isaias is right here. That's the lower level lower level center, which is you know continuing to rotate. But a lot of the convection and the you know you can think of a storm as kind of a pancake you have a lower level you have a pancake here you have another pancake on top and right now this top pancake has sheared off uh, you know in this direction leaving this lower level center exposed and that is you know certainly not what you want to see if you are a tropical cyclone trying to strengthen so that is you know been an interesting development overnight and tonight a lot of model guidance did have isaes weakening on its approach to florida or struggling mightily and that is exactly what it is doing today as you can see on the visible satellite imagery it does not look like much of a hurricane at all you can see the uh you know evidence spin in the lower level center but that is now exposed and when that becomes exposed, it becomes very vulnerable to drier intrusion and more wind shear. So right now what's causing this is wind shear out of this direction, blowing the top, literally blowing the top off of the hurricane and is it dis displacing it to the northeast and to the eastern side of the storm. And again, that is also important because that keeps the heaviest of rain, the tornado threat, and the strongest winds off of the U.S. coast. If you know, Isaias continues to move this way from Andros Island, and the center of the storm is about here by tonight. This is about here by tonight. All of the worst of the activity is going to be off to the east side of it and impact should be minimized along the Florida coast. So certainly good news and a good development today. National Hurricane Center, as of the 2 p.m. update, did keep it as a minimal hurricane, but again, it doesn't look like much of that right now. Just confirming this again on the infrared satellite imagery, the first thing you'll notice is a sort of ring that comes out and puffs outward at the beginning of the loop here, and that is almost akin to what we see with thunderstorms that are decaying and dying in the summertime. When you have thunderstorms, we call that an outflow boundary. It's almost as if the hurricane just kind of is having a big breath outward and a lot of you know energy being expelled, a lot of divergence, and a lot of air kind of going out. You can't see that exposed center on here because it is beneath these uh, mid-level clouds and things but usually you want to see these dark you know colors here and dark convection that indicates strong thunderstorm activity when that is near the center that's when you get intensifying tropical cyclones well right now the center is actually not even associated with this little area of convection the center is now exposed off here off of the western coast of andros island in the bahamas so you do not have that lined up for intensification again another reason why isaias is struggling mightily and will continue to do so as it approaches southeastern Florida. As far as the radar, this also confirms what we were seeing. Overall, a much weaker presentation than what we were seeing yesterday. Some of the outer rain bands getting very close to Miami, the southeastern coast of Florida, uh, you know, entering the Straits of Florida now as the center of the storm is right about here. It made a landfall on northern Andros Island earlier this morning. And for reference, here is Paradise Island, here is Nassau, here is Grand Abaco Island, here's Grand Bahama up here and southeastern Florida right here, of course. And the storm is going to continue to work its way this way and curve upward and begin to have that inflection point where it starts to ride along the eastern coast. How close it gets to Florida will really determine how, you know, it, it, it's still forecast to, you know, make a very close brush and possibly a landfall. How close to Florida it does get will really determine the future of the system and how many uh, how much impacts in terms of wind we know there's going to be rain rain you know with with the system but in terms of wind impacts and what other you know tropical impacts we can see with this will be determined by its interaction with florida in the next couple of hours and uh next real the next full day um really so if we move on to the national hurricane center interface here you can see we have isaias we have tropical depression 10 and now we have an area out here that is a little bit interesting uh, this is going to kind of be moving into the area where isaias was about a day or a day and a half ago and we'll have to watch that but again I can cover that in a later video. It's not the immediate threat. The immediate threat is Isaias right here. We can click here and see all the key messages for Hurricane Isaias. 
Uh, this is not yet updated to reflect the 2 p.m. advisory. Actually, this package, uh, the key messages may not be updated until the 5 p.m. advisory later in the afternoon. But the main thing I wanted to show here that I have not discussed yet is the rainfall potential with East Aeus. The wind impact, of course, being was stronger down here in Florida as the, you know, I, I failed to show you the cone, actually. So if I show you the cone, you know, as it approaches Florida and then it goes up here and skirts along the Georgia and South Carolina coast and then likely making a landfall in southern North Carolina near Wilmington, um, anywhere between Wilmington, you know, uh, New Bern, Cape Hatteras, anywhere in here, or New Bern's actually inland up here. Um, but, you know, Cape Lookout or Cape Hatteras, there's the three points here in North Carolina kind of sticks out. So Isaias will likely make landfall there as a, trop a strong tropical storm after it's brushed with Florida as a minimal hurricane, possibly even a tropical storm at the current rate it's going in its disheveled appearance. And we can continue to extrapolate that and it goes all the way up the eastern seaboard. You know, with any tropical system, you're going to have lots of rain and lots of wind. The wind impact will likely be minimized due to its struggling today, but the rain impact will stay all the way up the east coast, and that is reflected here in this rainfall graphic. QPF just means quantitative forecast, or qualitative, no, excuse me, quantitative precipitation forecast from the Weather Prediction Center. That's basically just rainfall. You can think of it as that. So with this green shade, you see this large swath of green and yellow and that indicates anywhere from two to six inches of rain, especially in eastern North Carolina, uh, most of Virginia, and all the way up to the mid-Atlantic in Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, uh, Connecticut, even feeling the impacts from East Aeus all the way up through Maine where you could still pick up a couple inches of rain. And again, you see this signal here where the heaviest rain is offshore due to the storm being very lopsided and being very east side heavy and um, keeping all of the, the worst of the um, precipitation and activity off coast. Certainly good news for Florida. You can see here really not much um, rainfall and uh, forecast for Florida. So flooding, not a huge threat. Of course, you know, flash flooding is, is definitely always a threat when you have heavy rain in a short period of time. But in terms of the actual water load coming on shore from you know, the tropical system of East Aeus, it does not look like it's going to be that prolific of a of a um, storm. So that is certainly good news. And as it continues to do that, it's, you know, if it doesn't have that concentrated convection or anything, it's not looking like that's going to change anytime soon. It looks like it's just going to be a quick burst of, you know, a couple inches to maybe up to four to six inches of rain in the mid-Atlantic area and maybe inland in South Carolina and uh, the eastern North Carolina, you know, coastal plain in Tidewater, Virginia area, but overall not going to be a huge, huge troublemaker, which is certainly off-brand for 2020, uh, with the, the year has been pretty crazy in terms of everything going wrong, including the pandemic, but altogether it looks like East Aeus will be held in check by the wind shear that has kind of blown off the top of the storm today and really exposed it, so that is certainly good news. Moving on to a Florida-centric view of everything, this is the National Weather Service Southern Region Tropical Web page, and this just shows the threats and impacts, and we can go through here quickly and see the wind threat, you know, potential for hurricane force winds along the Space Coast, Treasure Coast, down through Point Saint Lu Port St. Lucie, West Palm Beach, um, all the way down to Boca Raton, and uh, Miami, and the very, very southern end of that, uh, you know, potential for tropical storm force winds are above storm surge threat, moderate along the Space Coast and Treasure Coast, but again, uh, you know, not a huge threat because it is not anticipated to currently make a Florida landfall. It's expected to have a very, very close brush. Uh, flooding rain threat, moderate at the potential for localized flooding rain, not very high with the storm like we were just talking about. And the tornado threat, there's always the potential for isolated tornadoes with the outer rain bands. But typically, the tornado risk in a tropical cyclone is in the front right quadrant, which again will be offshore and will likely not cause a lot of issues for Florida. Uh, maybe in North Carolina when in the coastal plain of North Carolina along the outer banks when that eastern side of the system may be a little bit more inland so we'll have to keep an eye on that but we still have to get through the approach to Florida and everything like that. Looking here again at the coastal emergency risk assessment same story um, this is a little bit behind here the the East IES is now offshore of Andros Island um, right about somewhere in here a little bit to the south of this cone and it will continue to move up again not anticipated to make a florida landfall but a very close brush um, this may shift a little bit west because a weaker system will favor going more inland more west so we'll have to see about that and but at this time not expected to make a florida landfall so we're going to uh, cut through here around the big bend and then uh, coastal south carolina could see some formidable storm surge from this just some water piling up ahead of the storm when you have the storm rotating up this way 
you have rotating water that looks like that. You have counterclockwise rotation ahead of the storm, so you have the storm pushing water up against the coast as it goes, and then as it uh, passes by, you have that water evacuating from the coast and it kind of flushing the water out. So you have this big flux of water, and if it does coincide with high tide times, I have not looked at high tide times for coastal South Carolina tomorrow, um, or actually on Monday, um, we will have to see, actually this is Tuesday, so this is Monday into Tuesday, so August 2nd being tomorrow, August 3rd Monday, August 4th is Tuesday, so this is very early Tuesday morning. Uh, this is UTC time, this is actually early Monday night, so forgive me on that confusion, but uh, Monday through Tuesday is when the Carolinas will be impacted the most by Isaias. So that really covers most of it. I'll leave uh, leave the video again on this disheveled appearance of the hurricane and um, with its convection kind of being disorganized and a lot of things it really just kind of a strange system that has evolved over the past few days. It's never really gotten its act together fully which is certainly good news for intensity forecast uh, but still going to be impactful weather for the coast, uh, the east coast of Florida up through the uh, Treasure Coast and Space Coast up through Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, the Mid-Atlantic, expected to see rainfall from Isaias through Tuesday and Wednesday. So we will have to keep an eye on the storm like that. But for now, that does the update for today. I will post another update tomorrow after Isaias makes its approach toward Florida and begins skimming the east coast of the United States. Uh, that's all for now. Thanks for tuning in. Stay safe. And if you have any questions, feel free to message me or uh, leave a comment on this video. And I'll see you in the next video.